So I know it's been a while since I reviewed a Susuma Hirasawa album. A reason for that has to do with copyright rules that just make it really hard to do videos on his music. But mainly, it's because his music is just so hard to describe. It's beyond words and it probably comes from someone or something not from this world. But if you're used to me talking about samurai movies and never heard Susumu Hirasawa's music, I highly suggest checking it out. It's not for everyone because it has a very different sound and it might turn some people off. But if it clicks with you, then you're about to enter into a new world I like to call the Susumuverse. Beacon is Asumu Hirosawa's 14th studio album, releasing almost 6 years after his previous solo album, The Man Climbing the Hologram. His latest non-solo album released in 2018 titled Kai Equals Kai, it was under the name Kaku P Model. Kai Equals Kai was very electronic sounding and it used its fair share of the acoustic guitar. I remember at first not really liking it, but after repeated listens it became one of my favorite albums. On the other hand, The Man Climbing the Hologram was Hirasawa's familiar sound from the 90s, but successfully transferred into the modern era. It has since become one of my favorite solo albums he's done, and one I frequently go back to. So this new album, Beacon, has a lot riding on it. Not only has it been a while since his latest release, but this is also a studio album, and it's number 14. Hirosawa has now been making music for almost 50 years, going back to his first band involvement in Mandrake. So one might expect some kind of fatigue after making music for that long. Well, I'm happy to say that after multiple listens, it is very clear that Hirasawa continues to be the same musical genius that we have come to love him for. This in fact might be his best album since Aurora. Maybe even better. I can't explain in words how this album made me feel, but it's something close to pure joy. Something that music hasn't made me feel in a very long time. Beacon successfully brings back the acoustic sound from Kai Eco's Kai, but it creates something new and better with it. Starting from hearing the very first song on this album, I knew it was gonna be something special. Every song is a hit, and it's a type of music that sounds better the more you listen to it. You'll notice that certain sounds don't stand out as much the first time you listen to it, but after repeated listens, you start to notice more. I will say, the only song I didn't really enjoy on this album was Z Konite. For one, it's very short and underwhelming, and it's more like an interlude, but it's very dark and gloomy, especially compared to the rest of the album. It's just one that didn't really click with me, and maybe that's because I like more of the sound that Timeline gives you. But luckily it's really short, so it doesn't take up too much room on the album. I also noticed that the digest that we got about a month ago didn't really do this album justice. 20 second cuts from this kind of music tells you nothing. And I noticed that there was a lot of sleeper hits that I just didn't notice during the digest, like Topia. Like, that's a great song. So, as for inspiration, the only information I could find on this album is Hirasawa claiming back in April of 2020 that he would be making an album based on the current state of the world. And perhaps this explains the album art where we see him wearing a mask. As of now, I haven't really read any lyrics, but from what I heard, Lucy will soon be translating the songs, so that'll be interesting. I might end up not looking up his songs, because every time I do, I 
just find that they're really hard to understand and they're kind of like riddles. So the album starts with the song Beacon and it gives us this great opening because it tells us exactly what we're about to be in for. The only thing is I wasn't as excited because I already heard this one for a few months. Another World reminds me kind of of the man climbing the hologram. I really like the acoustic guitar in the background and it kind of adds this nice chill sound to it. I'll also say that the intro is pretty reminiscent of early King Crimson. It's definitely a song that's kind of going to grow on me over time and it is enjoyable. Topia is one that took a lot of us by surprise. We didn't really notice it during the digest, but now it's one of our most favorite songs on the album. It's just a song that's just full of hope. It's a beacon of hope. It's enchanting, it's beautiful, it's a true standout song, and the chorus is very angelic. I don't know how Harusawa does that with his voice, but it just sounds amazing. It might just be my favorite song on the album, and one of my most favorite songs that he's ever done. A Man Who Falls is very underrated. Not many people are talking about it, but I really think this is a really great song and I really love the chorus. I like how it also tones things down in the middle with Harusawa singing the same chorus, but in a more comforting and cooling manner. It also has great use of the acoustic guitar, and my favorite part about the song is the sound that Harusawa makes. It's just a really addicting sound and if Harusawa was an animal, he would probably make the sound. It's pretty cool because you have this really strong Baka chorus and then all of a sudden you get the... Burning Flowers is a lot of people's other favorite song, and a lot of people are talking about it. I find the chant to be really catchy, and it just has a very heavenly sound to it. It also has a lot of acoustic guitars and electronic sounds, so what more can you want from a Harusawa album? The sound then picks up and it's very reminiscent of Kai Goes Kai. I love the electric guitar solo. And the instrumentation just gets so lush and gorgeous toward the end. Landing is another sleeper hit. I absolutely love the cello that's used in the beginning.
it's just a sound that I could just hum in my head all day. And I don't know how Hirasawa does it, but he just mixes classical sounds with something new, something futuristic. You also get a really riveting synth sound. And it's just a really interesting song and it has a great replay value. Cold Song is one that I'm kind of iffy about. It's a lot to take in. It's very powerful. It's very serious. But I noticed it's a song that also gets better the more you listen to. At first, I didn't really like it. It reminds me of really serious and powerful classical music. The kind that's not kidding around. It's also kind of berserkian, and it fits in with medieval times, something Hirasawa does very well. Also, it really picks up at the end, going berserk almost. Ghost Train is a pretty amazing song. It's also one of my favorites just because I love the catchy sound that it has. It's a real reminder of just how underrated Harisawa's music is. And once again, I love the acoustic guitar in this song. End of Timeline is one that we heard during the digest, and that was my favorite song. This song just gives you a picture that good things are coming, and it lets you know that Hirasawa is just never gonna let us down. He's always gonna give us great music. It's very empowering, it's catchy, it has a very thunderous beat. followed by just a sound of pure joy. It's everything we want. <laughs> Zikanite is where things get controversial. I for one think this is the worst song on the album, but maybe it's not even a song but more like an interlude just because of how short it is. It's just very underwhelming. When we heard this during the digest we all thought it was going to be something grander but it turned out to be pretty weak. It has an almost creepy sound and in my opinion it reminds me of Dark Souls. Some of the sounds in this also kind of remind me of very early P model. I don't know, this is just a weird song to put on this album because it just doesn't fit in, I feel like, with the other songs. But maybe the point of it was to be the polar opposite of Beacon, something that's not full of hope and joy, instead it's dark and gloomy, the opposite of what a Beacon of Light is.
And the album ends with the song Beacon of Memory. It very much sounds like the end of a play where just everyone sings at the end. It's a pretty grand finish to an amazing album. Also, both Beacon and Beacon of Memory would make a perfect opening and closing to an anime. They just work perfectly. It's very hopeful, it's warm, it's a beacon of light. It has a very nice build up. This song is really growing on me. It didn't stand out to me the first time I listened to it, but now it's really starting to catch on. And I think this is an excellent way to end an amazing album. Hirosawa's music has come a long way. He started out with punk rock, and it slowly became its own genre of music. Now we have this sound that could only be achieved from decades of practice and evolution. Beacon really is a beacon of hope. It's a beacon of hope for the music industry. No matter how conventional modern popular music gets, at least we'll always have Hirosawa to just blow our minds away. Whenever I listen to his music, it just always brings me to a different world. It never fails. Beacon is truly a masterpiece, and it's one that I look forward to coming back to whenever I may feel like entering into a world that's just less bland than the one we know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you want to purchase the album, I'll provide a link in the description below. Please support Susumu Hirosawa so that we can keep going on his musical adventures.